So yeah. I know that the fans will want to know, um, would you be willing to share some of that playlist of Sister Dora that like, you got oh, into? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can do it, you know, you can email me later. Okay. Yeah. They, yeah. We'd love that. Kelsey, did you want to ask about season three prediction? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, you know, so um, because Sister Dora will be returning, I'm going to manifest that. So we're going to put it in. I like that. Tense. Yes, <laughs> we are manifesting that. So what would you like to see from Sister Dora and like her storyline? Oh, my gosh. I would love to see her history behind how she got to wanting to be a reinforcement. I think that's where my focus is. Um, and it could be like backtracks or like flashbacks, but I think there's just an importance in, um, in her history and her story. And if I'm being completely honest, I have not, um, I have like buckets, but I would say I don't have the details of it. So that's why I'm excited about um, wanting to dive back into the history of her because it will also bring up a lot of questions within myself of, well, this was her tribe, where was her tribe? Where did she grow up? What, you know, like all of those questions that um, at the time when I was preparing for season two, it was, I did a, a deep dive into her character, but I think I was more focused on her fighting aspect of it and wanting to get into the, um, into the OFS. Whereas um, with um, the past, of her character, a lot of um, a lot of her key details were still being developed. So um, yeah, and then I think also I really want to show a little bit more of my um, connection or my development with the connections with the other characters because um, I've had like you know times when I would uh, when I met them definitely some scenes where we would interact with each other, but there weren't as many kind of one-on-one -on -one scenes. Um, and I think having a one-on-one -on -one scene or just for me to be able to show more of why I'm reserved, what, what, how the ways in which I carry myself, um, because I know that I can still bring uh, a little bit of Sadiqa into Sister Dora, that it would be like conversation just as how, we, how we're having now, where I don't need to put on this facade of like Sister Dora and she talks like this and she, you know, like I, I would want it to be authentic, you know, so that the conversations that I'm having with you now would also be conversations that I'm having with um, Camilla, um, and, and so I think showing that connectivity is what allows the viewers to feel connected to the character, you know, like, oh, she, yeah, she's like that in person too, or, you know, like, she definitely takes a lot of pauses before she talks, you know, just things like that, that I, I just love watching characters where I feel like I could have a conversation with them and they would be like that in person. Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. And do you, do you see that as Camilla's uh, character being the one to bring that out? I do. I, I think I connected the most with Camilla um, just in a, in a more, uh, personal way she was the one that I had um, the fight scene with um, when what scene was it? Um, 
I'm trying to remember back to which scene it was, but there was one scene where both of us were in a scene together. And just before we were actually doing the scenes, we had this like just connection of, we were able to talk and chat, but then when it was time to do the actual scene, we were in it together. Whereas, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, like the, the, the lines were very um, even. Whereas sometimes um, I can be just reserved, you know, in my own space. And I, I don't want that to be presented as like, well, she doesn't want to talk to us. So, you know, it's just like, so I think she would probably be the one to kind of bring that out because we've already had that um, connection before the cameras were on. So it carried through once the cameras were on, if that makes sense. That's, so would you say that, Camilla might be your favorite character, or do you have another one? Oh, that's hard. Oh, I actually, I feel like um, Father Vincent was a character that I, I also connected with. Um, oh. He's so funny. He's so funny, but he's also, um, I would say he has a very mentor um, aspect of him, a very mentor aura. Same thing with Mother Superior. I would say I felt the most um, calm with her. Like I, she could ask me one question and I would just like lay it all out on the table. Like, this is all that's going on. This is what happened here. This is going on here. And she would just, just like, you know, as she sits like just very stoic. Um, whereas Father Vincent is kind of more of a, well, maybe you could try this, but this, you know, kind of the more collaborative help. Um, and Camilla's like, well, that's cool, but let's try this. And like, maybe, you know, so they all have different um, ways of bringing out the the character development, I guess, between the two. Um, so like but, Tristan, as an actor, he was like mentor, just laid back, wanted to be whatever. Olivia was like, let's like yeah. basically that's what you're saying. Like, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, like everyone, all of the characters, all of the scenes, um, all of the cast have we all have our own, you know, personalities. So, um, it's cool to see how, um, we all kind of present ourselves on scene and on set versus off of set, you know, like everyone kind of has their own way. So um, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful to see, definitely. That is one thing that every single interview that I've done, there was, everybody talked about the magical experience of Warrior Nun, like that, you know, it was like one of a kind, it was, you know, from Simon down to the very bottom, everyone gave their all, gave their best and just had an amazing time doing it. And they would always say that, you know, we don't get that on other jobs. Like this is rare. Yeah, it's very rare. Um, and even, even on set, I would say, like offset and, and on set, it just felt like, we are we are here for a reason you know we are um this is for a greater purpose and everyone was aligned with that it felt like to me cast and crew on set off set you know smiles all around um sorry so it just felt like that um cohesiveness is what makes the show so enjoyable to watch is it's not only um, what you see on screen, but um, off screen as well. So, um, oh, that was another question I was going to ask you, but it just slipped my mind. Um, go ahead, Charlie. <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh, no, I just wanted to say, I, I think now that you're bringing that up, I feel like that is definitely one of the main things that I've gotten out of these interviews. And I think the main fueling factor, at least for me personally, for kind of like being part of like this entire movement is just seeing firsthand everything that went on in the background and kind of like the passion that was involved from all sides, from all departments, from everyone that was involved and kind of like this atmosphere that felt so unique that just kind of like enlightened like this energy into everyone. I think for me personally, like that was like, I hear these things and for me it was like, no, we, we needed to save this show because like this was something unique and it kind of like shown, like it, it reflected into the final product. And I, I feel like it's it's one of a, one of a kind experience that I, I like it, it it was worth saving. Like I, I have no regrets. There were many sacrifices, but <laughs> hearing hearing what you're saying, it it just kind of like brings back that that like this was our mission. Like this is what we were trying to do and this is the reason why. Um so I'm glad to hear it. Um and it wasn't canceled because the um the viewership was bad like it was that was not why yeah do you I, do you have any information on was it so I know it was officially canceled what was because I know obviously it's saved now so in between that, that process what's the reason for why a show would be that's still new information to me so I'm still learning about like you know when shows are I mean, Charlie, you were part of the data team. So if you want to answer all the data questions. I mean, when it comes to the factors that we were seeing, we, we measure the man, we measure viewing hours, we measure basically your retention from our point of view, from a data perspective. there was not kind of like a valid reason. Yes, you can argue that um, the viewing hours between season one and season two were less, but first of all, we are working with less episodes. Mm -hmm. um, we are also working with the fact that it was um, not promoted at all. Like we, we spent a lot of time kind of like searching and like digging through the internet looking for like okay what kind of promotion was on this and like what kind of like monetary value can we attach to it we didn't really find any and to be honest like the only reason i knew there was a season two was because i went on tiktok and somebody posted an edit despite <laughs> being a fan from the very beginning i was like well that 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 is a bad signal but i mean looked into if you looked at it from a data science or a data analytics perspective we could not really every single thing that we saw was either positive or could be defended in the sense like this is the circumstances that we were working with this is how the show was launched like you have to have like that outside perspective of like this is the big picture that the show came in with um, in our eyes, it performed really well. Um, we, we've spent many hours trying to prove that. Um, but I mean, why it was canceled? We can't really, we can't really offer specifically why. We we know just the data behind how the show performed, and our hypothesis is it's not because of how the show performed. Um, what the was, reason was behind it? Well, <laughs> basically, I mean, it was set up to be canceled before it even launched. Yeah, that that's basically what the research comes down to. And I, I mean, like one of the the people that worked on everything too, you know, like really, it was released on Twitter, so I can say it. But like 
you know, kind of went into like this deep, deep dive into the system and showed like, not only was there like no marketing, but like there must've been some form of animosity to a certain degree for them to cancel it. Um, and then later on, you know, David Hayter did an interview and it came out that they wanted to like hide all the Avatrist stuff. Like they didn't want any sort of relationship between the between um, Beatrice and Ava. Um, so they had to completely take that out of the script and hide it. So there's also that theory of like once the execs saw that or the exec saw it, they were like, no, we told them not to do it. They did it. Canceled because because homophobia. Yeah. I'm saying it. So yeah. and and also they ended up moving the release time to November when they launched the biggest series ever. Yes. Like they just slid that in, no promotion. So that's, you know, it was not the show failing. It was that yep. it was set up to be canceled. I definitely feel like that's where I was, when people were asking, it was not because every time I would say, or every time, you know, like we're in a, oh, you were in war in a, like every single time. Without a doubt, there was like, um, people were so excited about the show from season one, even season two, like they were just saying how people rewatched the show because they didn't, they didn't catch as much, as many details as they wanted to from first season and second season. So they rewatched it. So it was almost like, I mean, I knew that it wasn't based off of how the show um, did, because I know it did amazing. I just had a, because the same thing for, um, you know, it's the whole politics part of it that I feel like I, why I also get frustrated with the, the entertainment industry as a whole, because there's just politics involved in it. You know, and so I didn't know if that was um, involved in it, but I just felt like the promotions and like the the um, advertisements for it, there was none. No, there was none. <laughs> there was li no. It was literally zero. It was, yeah. was none. Yeah. Um, they spent zero money like they did two like youtube commercials i mean ads or trailers there you go so yeah. yeah yeah there was literally two trailers there was no interviews we found a, like an episode of like a podcast i think it was from july of 2022 um where it but it was mainly about you know it was alba and about like mrs harris goes to paris but i think she mentioned warrior nun in it for a moment but uh, it wasn't about like other than that it was like there was nothing for season two there was no promo at all yeah we and people who <laughs> did reach out for interviews they oh, had to go God. through the agents like netflix you know they couldn't go through netflix oh yeah because apparently when they asked netflix or when people asked for um like I guess press packets through Netflix. Netflix said no. So then they were like, "Okay, Netflix, what?" Netflix, they didn't want. Well, I wouldn't say like that's who it was, but it seems like. Well, and that's what drove you know a lot of our fight was the injustice of it. You have this great show that we connect with, and you're going to do this to it, like so you know, we were fighting the system too. Yeah. Cause I mean like the show itself in general is very, it's so diverse, right. You know, like it has like the queer characters. So it speaks to the LGBTQIA plus, but then it also has like, you know, Eva who is like, like Spanish. And then you have, uh, you know, Christina who, or Beatrice who is Asian. And then you have Shotgun Mary who is a person of color, Sister Dora, a person of color. Like there's so many varieties of 
color and culture and taste and music and like you know you can feel the scenery as well as feeling the characters and it kind of felt like Netflix was like what's the big deal you know it didn't they didn't really get just how the depth of everything yeah yeah and you know representation matters seeing a reflection of yourself on screen I mean it's life-changing and I think that's one of the reasons why so many people like connected to your character too being able to just see just this confident badass woman you know there you know so is that the instant bond like who is that you know and so um so we were fighting for more than just the show we were fighting for ourselves too and we were fighting for you know the cast and crew because they love it I mean passion project yeah um so I'm going to jump to a question here since we're on the topic um when you learned that the show had been saved I mean obviously you were confused on why it was canceled yeah and then you're probably confused on why it was saved <laughs> like how that happened you know we are too but what was your initial reaction of like something's happening? I had to do a double t- I had to do a double take I had to like make sure I had all the information right because um Kai had sent us a it was a screenshot of like Warrior Nun Saved, I think is what it said. And it was something about like, I can't remember what exactly it said, but um, it was along the lines of like Warrior Nun Saved. Um, he had said like, we don't have much information from Simon yet, but um, this is something that rarely happens. And um you know, thank you guys for all your work, your hard work or something like that. And I, I remember I like opened up my WhatsApp. I looked at it and I was like, I put it back because I didn't want to like get too excited about it, I guess. I didn't know if it was like real or not. And so (laughs) then later on the day, I looked at it again and I read through it and I, made me realize how much I, loved and missed being a part of a team um and just aside from being a part of the team it was it's the show and like what you're um, speaking to before about the diversity of like that is that is what matters when at the end of the day it is entertainment it is something that we just can turn on and we watch and we get to immerse ourselves in the whatever hour or um, however long the episode is. And then you go back to your daily life and that's kind of like what it is. But if, if a show can grab you or if a show can um, inspire you or motivate you to doing something, feeling something, um, anything along the lines of learning more about yourself and how you can present yourself in the world like that to me is what matters you know and so I was just excited at first I I did double take because I didn't want to like overly you know sometimes when you get exciting news you don't want to like immediately get excited about it because there might be a catch-22 yeah (laughs) Um, I was just excited, regardless of of what it turns into. I am excited and I'm thankful and grateful that it's been saved. Um, yeah, so I don't have to keep saying, well, I don't know. I don't know about seasons. A lot of, you know, like, who knows about Sister Dora? But um, she's grateful and excited, definitely. It's okay, I'll, I'll take care of it. Sister Dora will be there. <laughs> Bring Sister Dora back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we all did a double take. It was like, okay, a sunrise. What does it mean? <laughs> and 
what does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean to you to, because just from you three, as I know of what, from what we've talked about, have put in hours on end of getting it to this point. So what does it mean for you guys at this point? Um, I mean, like, I know, like, personally for me, like, at first it was like, it was like, oh, like, I can, like, kind of relax and not worry about things, like, as, as much anymore. Um, but then it was also like, oh my God, what do I do with my days? Like, you know, obviously, like, I work and stuff and I have, like, an outside life, but then it would, you know, like, like, in all honesty, like, I'm not a big TV person. Like, I'm not someone who sits around and, like, watches TV or movies. Um, Warrior Nun was just kind of, like, a, a one-off. Like, I was like, oh, wow, I'm, like, really into this. Like, it really gripped me. But other than that, I was like, I don't, I guess I'll clean my house more. Um, but realistically, I mean, that hasn't happened. It's more so, like, trying to like keep up the engagement with like the fandom and because it went from yeah saving a series but to a lot of people it's like a, it's a community like a community of support of various writers of artists of musicians uh composers like it's just it, again it's this giant melting pot of various personalities some are not so great like you know obviously there's fandom drama there always is but it is a melting pot of diversity and like creativity and life. So a, some people were scared of the show is saved. Are we going to take that life away? So a lot of us are just like, saying like, no, we're not putting that, like we're not taking that life away. Like we're still here. We're still essentially like a family, uh, you know, and we can all still connect through this and keep up engagement. And we're still seeing people pop up on Twitter saying like, oh my God, I didn't even know Warrior Nun was canceled and now I'm seeing it saved. Um, oh my God, I just finished watching Warrior Nun. Thank God I, I waited to watch it because, <laughs> you know, so I mean. You were the, the opposite of people like, oh, now I'm going to go watch it because mm -hmm. it's safe. Because um, I know personally, yep. I won't watch a series if it's been canceled. Like, um, I mean, it was traumatic having this happen, you know, because it was so unexpected because it met the criteria to be renewed. Um, yeah, none of us can ever look at a sunset the same. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he, and so Simon traumatized us with the cancellation, <laughs> with the sunrise and so then it was like he was bringing joy back to the you know for the sun with us by doing the sun wait sunset and then sunrise yeah. oh, but, well, uh, still a little bit traumatized still with the yeah. sunsets <laughs> yeah like people are like oh so pretty and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know for a lot of us it was you know because we've been in like battle action mode like just like we have to go hard we have to like keep going keep going and I know that I was like still in that like battle mode even when it was announced like okay what what do I need to do we you know got to keep up this this and this and one of the team members was like no, now you can do what you want to do for the fandom. The show is safe, so now you can relax if you want to or take on another project if you want to. Um, but there's not a deadline. You know, you're not you're not fighting anymore. You're but the connections that we made, you know, all over the world. I'm still fighting for that and I'll continue to. Yeah. And like, and you know, to piggyback off of Adrian, like it, it is like that global um, community and that global connection. Like um, for example, like my friend Lucy is flying in from Czechia in a few weeks so we can like hang out in person. Uh, 
you know, we've had people fly in from all over the globe, uh, whether it be in the US, Canada, Europe, South America, um, you know, so that the, the basically like the show that you partook in and you, you know, impacted people with to this day still have a community. And that's because of something that you were able to bring to life. And that's, that's pretty beautiful. Yeah, that is beautiful. All right, Charlie, how about you? I mean, I don't have that much to add. I think you guys have pretty much said much said any everything. Um, I think right now, yes, it's definitely about kind of like fostering that community. There's a lot of people that I feel like I interacted with, but it felt like, oh, yeah, like we are doing this for the mission. So now it's like, okay, now we can actually kind of like, who are you? And why did we do all of this together? Like we were kind of like in emergency mode and didn't really focus on like ourselves. I think we put ourselves aside um, just to kind of like do this endeavor that we decided to take, uh, which is a nice change of pace. Um, because when I first watched the show, I feel like I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed it for five minutes. The end, I was like, marvelous. I love the story. But then like it dawned on me. I was like, okay, well, two girls kissed. So mm -hmm. is this gonna get canceled? And immediately, like, I just like jumped into Twitter. And like, I just tried to find my way around. I was like, I, I feel like I need to do something. Like nothing has happened yet, um, but I feel like this is in danger just because of like the topic at hand. Um, and lo and behold, like a week later it was canceled. Um, so then it just became, I was kind of like already in the mission. I was like, okay, I came here to save it. Might as well stay and see what can we do? Uh, because at that point, I think we all realized like, this is this is a really cool community like this is very global this is people from all over the world very talentful community um and it was like really what do we have to lose we already lost something that we really cared about um so it's it's been a journey and i i feel like adrian in the sense that okay how do i slow down now because for the last six months this has been my life <laughs> so how do i go back to that prior state like is there a prior state or like is this the new me um i i feel like this is a new me in a sense it is the new you <laughs> <laughs> uh, i feel like everyone in, in, on this call in some some sort of extent has been a mentor to me and like i feel like this has even like translated into work um I used to be really shy at work, like not speaking up in meetings. And now it's more so like, yes, you're gonna get me that because I asked you for it. Like, I, I don't have to. <laughs> like, I feel like I, I've been speaking up for myself a lot more. Um, and it's, it's, it's really progressed my career a lot. I just, because I've had the mentors in the community that I've had in the fandom. So it's, 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 it's been an interesting experience. <laughs> That's beautiful. That is beautiful. It's really cool to hear everyone's stories on the impact. You know, it's not only it's not only from the from the behind the scenes or behind the camera, but in front of camera and then behind the screens as well. You know, like it's it's a um, universal impact in so many different, in so many other ways than just um, watching a show just to watch it, you know, like it's, yeah. So hearing um, everyone's stories about that is amazing because I know like you guys have put in so much time and effort to saving it. So getting to this point, I'm sure must feel amazing. Yeah, I think I let out a really huge breath. I was like, what do I do now? <laughs> I was uh, like, like what do you mean I don't have to look at billboards? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Are, um, I think we have just a couple more questions, if you don't mind. 
uh, kind of switching back to um, like you as a person, what um, what is your daily routine like? Because you have to keep up training all the time. Um, do you do you just train all the time in between jobs? Do you like? I guess another thing is the question that I had was like. Okay, you go from California to the South. Like, mm. were you originally, like, have you ever, were you from the South? Like, how did you end up? Yeah. Um, so I'll answer the first, your second question first. Um, I was born and raised in Berkeley, Northern California. Um, and then I moved to Los Angeles for college. Um, I went to UCLA and then I started in stunts in Los Angeles and then um, was there for about two years. And then from there I moved to Atlanta. So I live in Atlanta currently um, and have been out here for about six, six years, like five years around there. Um, and so I ch have traveled back and forth um, mainly for my, my family's that's still in California. So travel back there for for um, like friends and family um and then just you know different parts of the state as well um but for work I've been traveled a few times back to California but there's just so much talent out there as well that um I find most of my work has been either in Atlanta or um different parts of uh like the U.S. and um, and then I've gotten to travel internationally. So, okay. um, yeah, which has been really cool. Um, and uh, in terms of my training, I would say recently, um, so when I graduated college, I went straight from school into stunts. So I didn't really have this like middle gap year. Um, or just the, you know, the transition from college student into like real life. So my mornings, my days were so random, so scattered all the time. And with stunt work, as I was, I was sharing before, you can get called for a job the next day, or you can get called for a job in two days, and then it might change, or your hour might change. And um, just with days on set, you're starting early in the morning until late at night. So having a calm consistency was really difficult for me to kind of have a daily um, routine because I was always in this state of like, I don't know, you know? <laughs> um, so after Warrior Nun, I worked um, two other shows and then just decided that I wanted to just take a little bit of a step back and, and just kind of focus on myself more and, and really making sure I was building a strong foundation. Um, starting my days with like um, meditation and journaling and like getting good breakfast, going for a walk, like things like that I don't think I was as focused on before. Um, so I felt scattered throughout the day. And so now I've kind of built that foundation. I got um, a yoga certification and just have been doing a lot of self-work. Um, and so with that, I've been able to, to train more efficiently um, and keeping my body more healthy because um, for me, it's about longevity. You know, like I, I love stunts. I love performing um, and I love being a part of uh something where i can bring myself fully um and i also felt like just the hours on set sometimes and um my mental space as an introvert it's just a lot of energy um and so i i just wanted to take a step back and kind of focus more on um keeping my body a little more healthy and finding um better recovery systems um so I am still training quite a bit, um, but just focusing on like, if my body doesn't feel good today, I'm just 
it's gonna do something different or I'll go for a walk or, you know, I am very like uh, creative, artistic. So I like to paint and draw and um, work on, on a yard or work on my garden, just things like that that I think are still physical. Um, movement for me is very important. So things that are still physical, but um, I I want to be able to run and jump and roll and all the things when I'm as I progress in my age. So um, I'm not a train every day, all day type of person. Yeah, I find that like I need um, off days. I need days where I'm just able to step away from um, screens, like go more into nature, go on walks and like things that kind of ground me and center me. So uh, I find an importance in, in balance. For sure. I think that's something that most of the people in the campaign um, failed at at first, and maybe the whole time was balance. I know that I, my wife had to talk to me like in February, be like, hey, um, you know, and so I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, but you get in that tunnel, you know, vision of just like, you know, not knowing yeah. that you're neglecting certain things because your your mindset is different. So basically <clears throat> right now you're still just <clears throat> taking time off. Yeah, well somewhat. I would say I'm I'm still training. Actually I'm um I'm part of a Capoeira school. So um, I'm still training and still staying active. Um, I actually feel the best I have ever felt physically and mentally in a very, very, very long time. So I think that taking the, the break and the step back was essential um, because Warren, Sister Dora and Warren and gave me the chance to see that I can be a part of a show that. Um, where I can bring my full potential and being healthy mentally and physically is what allowed me to step into that space. If I wasn't physically ready, if I wasn't mentally ready, I don't think that that sister door would have presented itself. So I feel that same way now where I'm just making sure that I'm still training and um, keeping my body healthy and, um, putting in even better systems to be even healthier and um, even more prepared for season three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any um, plans, like goals to be like, go into like fight coordinator or like move up? Or do you think that you want to focus more of the acting stunt part? I, I see myself as um director producer space no, no. Um, hell yeah <laughs> yeah I just am, I'm inspired I was truly inspired by Simon and how much trust he put in his performers and his crew and his cast and that speaks a lot to how important it is um to trust in your team um, and believe in your team and just say like, this is what I'd like you to do, but not, this is what I want you to do. You know, like that rigid, rig, rigidity um, is, it takes away from the creative space of the character, you know, because we all have our own ways of, of presenting ourselves. And so if you have a director or a producer who um, tries to put you in a box, I feel like it restricts you from being able to bring yourself fully. And so um, I love coaching. I love like lead, um, being that like lead by example kind of um, team member. And I feel like that is what um, helps productions run really smoothly. Um, and then also just having more women and women of color in the entertainment. Like we know how to we know how to run stuff. I was gonna say shit, but like you, you know, know, we know how to run shit. We do. 
you know? And so like women, I think the, I would say this actually, all of the shows that I've worked on that had women, product, women directors and women, women producers all ran super smoothly. Everything was like in order, everything like, the energy was there. We we had like breaks and, you know, like it was seen from that perspective of like, we don't need to just do this every, you know, like this, the rigidity, not saying that men have that character, but I feel like um, I felt this connection of just women understanding it from that empathetic and intuitive space. So I'm um, inspired by that, definitely. Can I make a suggestion? Um, I see uh, Shella Wilson, who is a writer, you and Sarah Walker on a project together. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really cool. That'd be cool. I'm also writing, I like to, I love to write. I'm a big journaler. So I love to write and um, I see myself writing as well. So. Um, yeah, we'll see where the road takes me. You know, I love to perform. So there's all these like different buckets that I see myself in. And, um, yeah, just, I don't, I don't close myself off to things. I'm very open. So just wherever I can share knowledge and, um, and learn and immerse myself, I definitely am, um, inspired by. So. Well, one thing this fandom does is we latch on and so you will have a fan base for the rest of your career. life yeah, yeah. so yeah Love it. which um, um do do stunt workers also make residuals um yeah i would say the shows that are on the streaming services um have not been as um, strong, I would say, as they are through network. Um, okay. So, so if I just like watch American Horror Story over and over and over again with the episodes you're in, it just, I got you. <laughs> Done. You do, and tell our friends. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking two and a half hours of your time with yeah. us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It went by really fast. I was like, oh, it's twelve twelve thirty already. <laughs> Yeah. I, Charlie sent me a message at like 11 15 he was like let's do a time check make sure you're okay <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was amazing yeah um we'll definitely you know later down the line whenever we know something uh and you're allowed to definitely do this again sometime yes and there, um yeah go ahead uh, I was just going to ask like the the main question from like well not the main question but one of the biggest questions that we kept getting from the fandom oh gosh um, everyone oh. wanted to know what your arm workout is <laughs> my arm workout I, I I would have to say I mean it was just because I was in gymnastics since I was two you know like I was I was doing this motion when I was like four years old you know like yeah. there's it's like mo this part of my body my mom says like you were born with muscles like I think genetics gymnastics um just health eating well like all those things you know I think are but arm workout I mean yeah I don't know so basically people just need to like do flips and you know get in gymnastics and yeah. pray <laughs> like really good for everything like just your mind, your body. So even if you just take one gymnastics class, you learn a lot about your body, the things that your body likes and doesn't like. I took one gymnastics class with a friend and I was afterwards, I was like, ow, ow. <laughs> Everything hurts. <laughs> Everything hurt. Everything. I was like, I don't even do that much. But yeah. it was like, you know, it works out your body in so many ways that you're not used to. Same with yoga though. When I first started doing yoga, I was like, oh, this is easy. And then the next morning I was like, ow, ow. I'm like, oh, that's, that's what I got for talking shit. So deserved. Is there any um, message you'd like to send to the fandom to close up? 
Hmm. First, I would just like to say thank you. Um, I'm, I, I'm wanting to be better at social media. I'm just not as, as active in the space. Um, but I've, I've been sent so many amazing things and like very flattering things. And so it just, I, I feel honored, you know, to have so many individuals who believe in, in Warrior Nine and believe in me and, and my character and Sister Dora. And like, really it's what is the drive, even if it was something that I wasn't as um, present in or aware of, I felt it, you know, and it, it brought me to this space here with you guys and with you ladies here. So I almost feel like, um, I'm just thankful and grateful, yeah. And I also, from what you guys were explaining before, I feel like there's uh, an appreciation for trusting in we, we won't stop on the mission until it's completed, you know? So that's, it's beautiful to see, really. And like, women are just, amazing <laughs> we're just so cool yeah so yeah well it was it was so nice to talk to you and thank you so much thank you for obviously like you know everything that you've done and like really putting in the work into your character obviously like it left an impact on like the side of that assery but you know to, to also the degree of you know, like Charlie and I and Adrian and I were all saying, you know, like even as you just standing over here and reserved and like carrying yourself a certain way to fit the narrative of the character that of like a, trying to give her a story without having her say her story, that was felt across the board. Uh, multiple people see it. Multiple people are like gunning for you and saying like, please, like Sister Dora for season three, she has to be in there. So everyone is still kind of begging for your story. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think Kelsey summed it up perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. But getting to know you and the person that you are, you know, we're even bigger fans now. So <laughs> if you ever need anything, yeah. you have us to turn to. You have a new project coming up that you need, you know, awareness brought to. You. We've got you. I got that. All right. Big facts. Locked in. Thank you. Thank you have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Bye.